So how do you, how do you answer this uh, problem? I, think I, have uh, the microphone. Microphone. I suppose I answer it by saying I'm not quite clear what our understanding of the whole universe can be. But whatever scientists at any given time tell us about the whole universe, you can always then add a further... So, you know, Stephen Hawking recently said we don't need philosophers, we don't need religion anymore, we can now understand the whole universe in some way. But I think that is rather silly, because somewhere along the line they're going to make some reference to something, and then Hamza's or I or anybody else can say, oh, and what's the explanation for that? My claim, therefore, is that somewhere along the line you're just going to stop, and you actually haven't helped by talking about God or Allah. Whether you understand the universe as an actual infinite um, existence, or whether you understand it as having a beginning, or whether you understand it as not really fitting into those modes of thought at all, and I suspect it's that last one, but whichever one you go, nothing is helped by then saying, oh well, in some sort of causal way, which we now don't understand because it's not in time, there is a creator who somehow does exist eternally. Well, you can't really make sense of that, so why not just acknowledge no, the whole universe? I'm, I'm sorry, one question. Oh, okay. I don't mind having a follow-up. Okay. Can I give a second? Yeah. Yeah. See, the point is, the big problem here is that, again, we're saying the best explanation doesn't require an explanation. You're stopping someone without justification. We're saying, look, we have good reasons to believe that the universe began to exist based on cosmology and philosophy about the infinite, about the infinite doesn't have any export into the real world. You're not addressing this. You're just bypassing it because you're just believing this kind of abstract Wittgenstein philosophy that, you, you know, explanations ad infinitum, therefore we must be skeptics and we can't find no truth. Let's talk rationally here. We're saying we have an explanation. We've proven and we've shown that the premise number one, whatever big exists, has a cause. Two, the universe has began to exist based on the infinity, based on cosmology. And it's a valid and sound argument, therefore the universe has a cause. You're denying that because you're saying, I don't want that to be an explanation. But we're giving you reasons which you haven't addressed all night. <laughs> We've been absolutely flooded with questions and uh, unfortunately we're out of time. So I'd like to um, thank both speakers for their lively debate. I mean, the main topic of today wasn't sociology or anything else or criminology. Or we could have discussions about all day until the cows come home. Today was about does a cause for the universe exist and do we have good reasons for it? I think Peter Kay, he shifted his explanation to a certain position, the universe, and that's it. He hasn't given us an explanation for that. And if we do go down that explanation, that would mean that the universe created itself, which is absurd. Because that would mean it was in existence and not in existence at the same time if we go down to a certain root. The other root is our root, that there is a cause for the universe, and we've got a sound argument, it's a valid argument. The first two premises, whatever begins to exist as a cause, the universe began to exist, we've justified it. You haven't even dealt with, you haven't deconstructed the argument and brought another argument forth. You've just talked about explanations all day without explaining what the explanation is. So we said, therefore, there must be a cause. It's a sound, valid argument in a conceptual ana analysis. It has the features of a monotheistic God as pronounced in the 112th chapter of the Quran. This you haven't dealt with at all. This what you, you should have dealt with. And then you start going on to the really cheap under blows. Yeah? In boxing, when you underneath the belt, you get, a, you get a minus point of Sharia law without understanding it, about sociology and other things, about crime and morality. But the crux of the matter is, you haven't addressed but the rational argument for the existence of God. Thank you. Well, quite a few issues have been mentioned here. I am reminded of um, an atheist, an American atheist called the comedian W.C. Fields, who was an atheist, and yet when he was elderly, he was seen looking um, on his bed at the Bible. And they said, what's happened, W.C. Fields? Are, are you, you know, being converted to Christianity? 
And he said, no, 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 just looking for loopholes. Um, we have actually talked about the Quran, and although it isn't the exact title of the event, undoubtedly Hamza got a little rant going over my misunderstanding of the Quran, but I am still as utterly baffled, therefore, as to exactly what Hamza's understanding is with regard to the just punishments, whether they do include things like stoning or not, and so on. And it would be nice, actually, to know what the situation really is. His answer struck me as utterly obscure, so I still don't know whether he thinks all the Ayatollahs who promote adult promote stony of adulteresses are in fact um, getting it right or getting it wrong and how. That's one reason, that's the sort of reason why I think you ought not to be basing your morality on what is said in the Quran, and you ought not to be basing your morality, your understanding of the universe, on the basis that the Quran is somehow some divinely given book. On the particular arguments, I think understanding the beginning of the universe and um, by scientists is not this simple understanding that Hamza is deploying. In that understanding, it does not strike me that such a beginning of the universe needs to have a cause. So I challenge that premise one. Um, and I'm, secondly, I'd also sort of challenge the assumption that anything which has a beginning must have a cause. So I challenge both of those premises. I challenge them consistently this evening. And Hamza keeps on saying I ignore his argument. I don't. It's just as a lousy argument. And finally, I need to finish, I see, people talk about what's the point. The point of our lives is to actually flourish and make the best of it for ourselves and for others, and nothing is helped by thinking it's going to go on eternally, because then the question is, what's the point of eternity? And it has the same problems. Thank you. You didn't explain how you challenged the problem. Okay. You have a minute, have a minute. Live and let live and enjoy life for the best you can and for others. And please don't hang it all on some odd comments in this book, which even if you take them in general terms, nonetheless you get many, many people arguing about it. Better to trust your conscience, your fellow feeling, discussion, debate, but not discussion and debate trapped within a bit of old writing. Thanks, Peter Cavism. <laughs> There's a new religion, it's called Peter Cavism. He knows what our purpose is all of a sudden. He knows what we should do. And he says that we should never refer to old books. But the funny thing is, if you study knowledge or the study of knowledge, epistemology, we actually, we actually require old books. Why I mean, in tell? your works, you refer to Wittgenstein, which is a couple of Why years old. Why do you utter these untruths? I did not say never read, 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 um, never make use of old books. Okay. I just Can I have to say that. I said do not say to understanding. It's out of one old book. <laughs> it being an old book doesn't Close. mean it's not true. Because he would claim it's irrational to so add it to the list of the problems. He believes that the answer which must be simple. It's written sky, written sky in philosophy. And we don't have any answers. Alright, yeah, yeah, I'm getting to ask it, yeah. Oh no, what he was saying is he 
this one personal view that we should have a positive cause for the universe. The reason being is because when we posit a cause for the universe, he thinks it creates more problems. That's it. He thinks it's more incoherent. And I'm thinking, I see his point. Ah, but that's assuming it's a mystery, because we're saying it's not a mystery, because we have reasons to stop the explanation when we've stopped it, based on cosmology.